Hi, my name is Bunny Fufu from Cloud9, and this is my basic champion guide to Poppy. So Poppy in solo queue, it's a little weird. I mean, it almost feels like you're weak in lane, but also really strong in lane at the same time. So, kind of just abuse your spikes. Like, if you hit a level 2 power spike before them, try to get a wall bang off. And I don't know how many first kills I picked up that way, but it's pretty easy if you do get that opportunity. If not, just farm it out, and again, just look for the jungle ganks. Look for flash wall bangs when... Your allies are close, or burst them down, or small trades with your shield. Just kind of abuse everything in your kit when you're trading and fighting as Poppy. Doing a camp level 1, you're going to be wanting to start Q, and whether you're leashing or you guys are getting the camp to yourself in the bot lane, um, make sure you use your passive, get the shield on, rock both Qs obviously, and just tank as much as you can. So laning as Poppy, um, try to get the camp for your bot lane. If the enemy's positions correctly, it's kind of hard to trade just because every time you E in, they're going to be pushed back, etc. So keep that in mind. Try to abuse your advantages. Use your passive shield a lot in lane. And yeah. So your bread and butter is pretty much going to be a flash wallbang combo into either you burst them with your AD or even better if your jungler's around. So keep that in mind. That's honestly the most kill pressure you have, kind of like an Alistair flash queue in a sense. You view it as that, I would say. So in team fights, your job is to just be as annoying as possible, whether it's wall banging enemies into a wall or getting Q slows off, soaking as much damage as you can with your passive. And another big thing would be stopping um, jump abilities with your W and hitting people out with the ult. All those things to keep in mind there's multiple different ways to use all of them, and it can be hard at times, but if you get really good at it, you can abuse Poppy's kit pretty hard. So, in team fights, let's say it's a 5v5, and obviously you're the support, so you're kind of less valuable than, let's say, their mid lane or AD carry. So, in team fights, if you can just get your ult on, let's say, the mid or AD carry, jungle top, whatever, to be honest, um, before the team fight starts. You can kind of make it a 4v5 or a 4v3, how, depending on how many people you hit. So always keep that in mind and try to abuse that. So let's say the enemy champion has a escape ability like a Corky Valkyrie or Riven Qs or a Kalista Jump. Kind of use your W when you think they're going to try to get away so you can cancel their ability. Because you only it only lasts for like 2-ish seconds, a little more. So, and it has a really long cooldown, so you're only going to be able to use it once, really. So try to use it wisely. So an extremely nice thing about Poppy is that she's a flex pick for top and jungle as well as support. And in solo queue, it's not like the hugest advantage in the world, but it's a pretty nice. You can just pick it whenever they won't really know where it's going until later in the draft. In pro play, it's a huge thing that people have to always keep in mind. It's just pretty nice for solo queue. You can pick it whenever, not really sure where it's going. So we're going to be taking 80 reds, HP yellows, MR blues. You can go per level MR blues if they have no magic damage in the lane. So it'll help out a little bit for late game. And you're going to take armor wins. I like these masteries a lot on Poppy, especially because it's a really aggressive page and I think it works really well for solo queue as well. So the big thing about this mastery page is uh, I take Thunderlords, so keep in mind during trades you're going to want to get 3 procs um, on them, just to proc Thunderlords, so always keep that in mind for when you're trading. So for the first one it's going to be a Q max, and this one's like really strong in skirmishes, it's high damage. And if you really want to abuse like the trades you're going to be getting in, this is the build you want to go. It's pretty good for solo queue. So for this one, you're going to be getting one through three, one point each ability, starting off with E or Q, and then E or Q on the level two, whichever one you didn't get, and then level three would be W, and then you're going to be getting three points in Q, and then max E, and then finish off Q, and then max W. This skill order is for... Uh, Scaling into late game with your E stuns faster than you would be maxing Q alone. So keep that in mind on how you want to progress the game and kind of just evaluate both teams and see where you really want to be putting your points into. So this third one, I don't really recommend it, but if you feel like you're going to be having not too many trades and you want to scale late game quicker and really abuse the wall bang, it's getting one point each, one through three, and each of your abilities, and then it's maxing E, and then Q, maxing Q second, and 
like I said, the damage isn't that high, but the stun slash kill potential is like really high, so you're gonna mainly be looking to abuse that with like flash stuns or whatever you have to do. And just know the Q damage is a lot lower, so your constant trades are gonna be worse and less if you're getting those wall bangs off constantly. So there's two different routes you wanna keep in mind. Um, a magic resist route and an armor route. If they have a lot of magic resist, you wanna get the core, which would be Sightstone and Boots of Swiftness mainly. The next through the MR route would be get Locket as soon as possible. And then after that, uh, I like to go Frozen Heart for the CDR. Honestly, after that, there's a bunch of items you can just free bulk go from there. I'll put some in the image below. So for this build, it's mainly prioritizing armor. Obviously the first two core again would be Sightstone and Swifty Boots. I honestly kind of hate rushing Frozen Heart. So to negate that, would be um, getting face of the mountain, which gives me a bunch of health. And then that allows me to get the frozen heart next. So I'll have a bunch of armor and health. And that'll put me at 35% CDR, which is super nice. And then if they have some MR, you're the support and locket's really nice for your team. So you can go that, or you can just go deeper into armor items. Just keep in mind, if you're going the armor route that we talked about, which would be frozen heart after the face of the mountain, make sure it abuses the reduced attack speed on some heroes. Like let's say if they have a Corky and Ezreal, that doesn't really negate the attack speed debuff just because they're kind of casters more than auto attackers. And let alone they do a lot of AP damage in the first place. So if you don't really get the attack speed reduction benefit from many heroes on the enemy team, uh, you might want to look towards other options such as like Randuins or Deadmans. They don't give the CDR aspect of Frozen Heart, which is kind of bad, but it's probably a better alternative if, like I said, you can't abuse the attack speed reduction. So today we went over Poppy. I hope you guys appreciated the guide, and you can follow the rest of my guides over at lawclass.com. Thank you so much for watching the guide today.